A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 14th of June 2022. Displayed here are the list of news articles that I have chosen for today's discussion. See each and every topic of today's discussion is going to be very much relevant for both your mains as well as prelims. And note that you can directly use these points to enrich your mains answer and along with today's prelims practice question I have given you a quiz question for which you can arrive at the answer easily by listening to the discussion okay so without wasting much time now let's get into the first news article discussion now look at this news article this news article talks about the custodial debts see five police personnel including the inspector of police in kodangayur in tamil nadu have been placed under suspension This is following the reported custodial death of a history sheeter that is a person with a criminal record the person is said to be dead under suspicious circumstances this was after he was picked up by a special team in connection with an investigation into a theft case in Kodangayur police limits let's not get deep into this issue instead let us learn what are custodial debts then we will see some of the reasons of these debts then we will see about the legal provisions and constitutional provisions that are against these custodial debts what are custodial debts first of all custodial debts are events of the demise of persons who are detained by police see this may be during pre trial or after conviction custodial debts can be broadly classified into three types firstly the death in police custody secondly the death in judicial custody and the third type will be the death in custody of army or paramilitary force here police custody means that police have the physical custody of the accused while judicial custody means an accused is in the custody of the concerned magistrate okay in police custody the accused is lodged in police station lockup while in judicial custody it is the jail okay Are you all clear with the difference between the police custody and the judicial custody? Now you have to note one thing: custodial death does not always mean the death of an accused during police custody or judicial custody due to police torture. See, it is widely referred to as death that happens to a person who is under trial or has already been convicted of a crime. It can be due to natural causes, like you take illness. or may also happen due to suicide then in fighting among prisoners also okay but in many instances it is due to police brutality and torture that is the reason behind the death okay so now let's see some of the reasons of the custodial deaths firstly no other method of interrogation is being adopted except using force see no preparation is being made beforehand for interrogation The arrested person is not properly searched before his entry in the lockup of the police station. Due to this no, the arrested person commits suicide in the lockup by cutting their nerves, by hanging, taking poison or by burning themselves. Mostly the death in police custody due to suicide committed by the accused in the lockup or as a result of misbehavior of police personnel with the arrested person. Okay? See involvement of such police officers of the same or other police station in the interrogation is also a reason for custodial death. See they are concerned about the arrest of the accused person and they used to cause more harm to accused person because they are not involved in interrogation in writing. Okay? Then fourthly the reason may be because of not providing any medical aid or the injured accused person is not examined and here the death occurs in police custody due to slackness of the police officers okay see sixthly it might happen due to the lack of patience in police personnel because they want immediate confession of the accused they use force immediately if the accused person refuses to admit the guilt and then it may happen also due to the lack of supervision during the interrogation by the senior officers see the officers used to come at the police station after the death in police custody that is the problem here okay then it may also happen due to the traditional habit of using force by the police which is prevailing in the department 
and it is proved by the fact that the police have used force not only with hardened criminals but they have used force with those persons who have no previous criminal record at all and they died in police custody the last reason may be there is no respect for law and human rights of other persons and too much of eagerness of being successful by adopting wrong methods that is using force see because of using force it results in custodial death am i right so all these are some of the reasons that are causing the custodial deaths now let us see the legal provisions that are against the custodial torture in india first let us see the constitutional provisions that are against this constitutional death firstly the constitution provides protection against conviction or enhanced punishment under ex post facto law that is under article 20 clause 1 of the constitution of india the article prohibits the framing of ex post facto criminal laws as well as the imposition of any penalty greater than which might be imposed under the law in effect at the time the offence was committed see in a nutshell the article prohibits the creation of a new offence with a retrospective effect secondly take article 20 clause 2 of the constitution it provides protection against double jeopardy see the article states that no person shall be prosecuted and punished for the same offence more than once then take article 20 clause 3 of the constitution it provides that no accused person will be compelled to be a witness against himself see this is very important as it acts as a safeguard in obtaining evidence from the accused through coercion and torture now talking about the legal provisions against this custodial deaths in india take section 163 of the code of criminal procedure that is crpc of 1973 it prohibits the investigating officers from making an inducement threat or promise under section 24 of the indian evidence act 1872 not only this it also prevents him from forcing any person to make any statement which he would like to make on his free will see section 24 of the indian evidence act 1872 makes all confessions made under inducement threat or promise as inadmissible the section gives the accused the right not to make any confession against his will because it is well understood that if such evidence is made admissible it will act as a trigger for the police to use torture and force to extract evidence against him am i right See apart from this take section 164 clause 4 of the Code of Criminal Procedure 1973 that is CRPC it provides for recording and signature of confessions in proper manner and endorsement of the confession by a magistrate this is to the effect that it has been made voluntarily okay so that's all about this news article See in this news article we have known about what are custodial deaths and note that custodial deaths are not only caused by torture by the police it is also due to various other reasons we had seen many reason which are causing those custodial deaths then we saw what are all the legal provisions or constitutional provisions that are against these custodial deaths see according to the national crime records bureau the custodial deaths in india are getting increased So you might expect a preliminary type of question or a mains type of question in this regard okay and see whatever points we had discussed today you can directly utilize it in your mains answer and you can also enhance your answers by using these legal provisions or constitutional provisions to safeguard a person from the custodial deaths in India okay so with these key points in mind now let's move on to the next news article discussion Now look at this news article it talks about the Ayushman Bharat digital mission in India it is in the news because yesterday the ceo of national health authority has announced that bengaluru will soon house a technology center for this ayushman bharat digital mission so this is the crux of the news article given here now let us use this as an opportunity and learn some of the points about the ayushman bharat digital mission See Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission was launched by the Prime Minister. It was launched via a video conference on 27 September 2021.
What is the core purpose of this mission? See, Aishman Bharat Digital Mission will connect the digital health solutions of hospitals across the country with each other. The mission will not only make the process of hospital simplified, but also will increase ease of living. How? See, the digital ecosystem will also enable a host of other facilities like digital consultation, concern of patients in letting medical practitioners access their records, etc. Thus, with the implementation of this scheme, old medical records cannot get lost as every record will be stored digitally. Okay? In simple words, the Aishman Bharat Digital Mission aims to develop the backbone necessary to support the integrated digital health infrastructure of the country. That is, it will bridge the existing gap amongst different stakeholders of the healthcare ecosystem. This is through digital highways. Now, what is its objective? How was it created? See, it talks about the attainment of the highest possible level of health and well-being for all at all the stages. This is through a preventive and promotive health care orientation in all development policies. Then through universal access to good quality health care services without anyone having to face financial hardship as a consequence. Thus for this, a national digital health blueprint was produced. This laid out the building blocks and an action plan to comprehensively and holistically implement digital health. This document describes about a digital ecosystem for healthcare services across the country. Since the implementation is envisioned to be in a mission mode, the initiative is referred to as the Aishman Bharat Digital Mission. After this, the mission began as a one-year pilot program in six union territories. Who are they? They are Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Chandigarh, Dadra and Nagar Heavily and Tamil and Tew, Ladakh and Lakshwadeep and lastly Puducherry. Now it is going to be implemented throughout the country. See it is a national digital health ecosystem that supports universal health coverage in an efficient, accessible, inclusive, affordable, timely and safe manner. How is it done? See, it is done through provision of a wide range of data, information and infrastructure services. Also, it duly leverages open, interoperable, standard-based digital system and ensures the security, confidentiality and privacy of health-related personal information. Okay? Just have a look at this image to know who are all involved in this national digital health ecosystem. See, these are all the stakeholders who are involved in this mission. So, what are all the features available under this mission? There are three key features or key components that are available under this mission. Firstly, it provides health ID for every citizen. Through this, personal health records can be linked. And secondly, it provides healthcare professionals registry. See, this is a repository of healthcare providers. That is all the healthcare providers. Okay. And thirdly, it provides healthcare facilities registries. See, this is to ensure the ease of doing business for doctors or hospitals, whomsoever it may be. Okay. So, it is providing for health ID, healthcare professionals registry, then healthcare facilities registries. Okay. So, that's all about this news article. See, we saw about a great mission that has been going on in the country and note that you can utilize these points directly as an example in your main answer. Whenever a health sector based question or how the development in health sector is being digitalized, when such kind of questions are being asked, you can easily quote this entire mission as an example. Okay. And note that you all know this will be direct preliminary question. So whatever points that we discussed in this no, can be directly asked as a preliminary question. For example, features based on this mission can be asked as a preliminary question or the stakeholders involved in this can be asked as a preliminary question. Then the mission or the vision of this can be asked as a preliminary question. So note each and every point in this discussion. Okay. With these key points in mind, now let's move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this editorial article. In this editorial article, the author discusses the reasons and factors behind rising global food prices. 
mainly all the focuses on the factors other than agricultural production see when there is price rise we think that demand for that commodity is more compared to the supply such increased demand leads to rise in market value of that commodity since here supply is less than demand we also assume that supply is not there due to serious shortfall in agricultural production that is low production of that commodity well it definitely is one of the factors but other global factors also affect the price of the food commodities that is what is discussed by the author along with certain suggestions to tackle the rise in food prices so let us see these factors and suggestions in today's discussion see this is important for your upcoming mains examination also it will be very useful for your entire upsc preparation see kindly pay attention to this entire discussion it is going to be very very useful okay before that the syllabus relevant to this news article is given here for your reference just go through it now let's start our discussion see the factors other than agricultural ones are focused because the previous price rise globally was triggered by factors outside agriculture see world has witnessed three global food price hikes so far one happened during the year 1973 to 76 and the second one happened during the year 2007 to 12 and third is a recent one which has not finished yet yes it is one that started with the pandemic in the year 2020 so what factors outside agriculture triggered these food price hikes First is the built up of price shocks due to trade patterns. This happens due to the relation between the trade dependence on commodities and trade disruptions. See many food commodities are traded globally, am I right? For example, if we take vegetable oil, according to author, around 38 percentage of the vegetable oil which is produced and consumed is globally traded. This shows that world communities are dependent on trades for vegetable oil. In other words, the trade dependence for vegetable oil is 38 percentage. So, if the trade is disrupted in some way, then the vegetable oil availability is also disrupted. Am I right? So, this is a scenario when demand exceeds supply. Hence, it results in price rise of vegetable oil. So this is the first factor leading to food price rise which is other than agricultural reasons okay now let me come to the second factor it is the diverse usage of food commodities that is the factor that relates to how food commodities are used it is not true that food commodities are only used for human consumption as a part of dietary requirements they also have other purposes One among them is diversion of food for biofuel needs. Biofuel here refers to the liquid or gaseous fuel that is primarily produced from biomass. What is that biomass? Biomass is includes the biodegradable fraction of products, wastes and residues from agriculture, forestry and related industries. See it also includes the biodegradable fraction of industrial and municipal waste. So products of agriculture that is feed stocks are made into biofuel for example take bioethanol it is also a biofuel it is produced from sugar cane sugar beet sweet sorghum corn cassava algae etc etc that means agri products like sugar cane and corn are diverted to produce biofuels see this is other than being consumed by humans am i right and second if we take biodiesel which is also a biofuel is produced from vegetable oils yellow grease used cooking oils or animal fats we saw the example of vegetable oil already where we saw we saw in the trade aspect okay see this vegetable oil is also used for biodiesel production So according to the author this usage has increased to more than 15% in 2021 from only 1% in the year 2003 from this we can understand the reliance on agri products including vegetable oil 
Why such importance is given to biofuel? Because of its nature of being a renewable energy, cost effective and an advisable environmental alternative to fossil fuels, it is given more importance. See, it is a replacement to fossil fuel not only because of environmental reasons but also because of its economical reason. It is said that a liter of bioethanol cost rupees 65 against the 110 rupees of petrol. Okay. In addition to this, biofuels also increase the share of renewable energy resources of a country, thereby helping to meet the global targets that we have set. See, this high reliance on biofuel means increased diversion of food commodities for biofuel production. Am I right? So, this increases the demand for such commodities, thereby again increasing their prices. Now, let us take the next factor. It is the increase in other products that are necessary for agriculture. Such products include fertilizer and other agrochemicals such as pesticides like herbicides, fungicides and insecticides. Now, let us take fertilizer for instance. As you know, it is a critical and expensive input required to improve the agricultural output. See, as per April 2022 edition of the World Bank's Commodity Markets Outlook, fertilizer prices have risen nearly 30%. This I am saying since the start of 2022. But this rise is happening for a long time. See, there has even been 80% surge last year. In this graph, you can see the price of various fertilizers such as urea, DAP, that is diammonium phosphate and MOP, that is muriate of potash. You can see the data from 2008 to 2022. It is clearly visible how the prices of these fertilizers have increased dramatically after 2022. And according to the author, international price of fertilizers has increased by 150% between April 2021 and April 2022 itself. Particularly if you take urea, which is represented in red line, its prices have already surpassed 2008 peaks. The international price of a 50 kg bag of urea has increased from less than 1000 to more than 3000 in the last 15 months. Other fertilizer prices are also following the same trend. See, this rising fertilizer price is due to confluence of factors such as rapidly increasing input cost, supply disruptions that are caused by sanctions and export restrictions. See, the sanctions and export restriction have been exacerbated by Russia-Ukraine war. Overall, since the fertilizer is an important input in agriculture, the rise in its price results in rise of price of food commodities also. Okay? Now, let us come to the next factor that is causing the food price rise. This is one of the important ones. It is export and import in agricultural sector. Export and import are important as any international food price rise is transmitted to the national food prices. See, this leads to rise in domestic prices. Author calls this transmission as inevitable because this can only be prevented if there is no trade among the countries. See, when you take export and import, they are affected by many reasons. Like you can take the geopolitical reasons. We know how Russia-Ukraine war resulted in a wheat crisis due to supply constraints. This was further aggravated by export ban on wheat by several countries, including India. See, India did it for three reasons. One is to manage the overall food security situation in India. The second is to check inflation. And the third is to support the needs of the neighboring and vulnerable countries that are adversely affected by the sudden change in the global market for wheat. And they are facing food deficit. Okay. So, these are the three main reasons for the ban of export of wheat in India. Okay. See, this ban, even though seem legitimate from India's perspective, it has affected India's image as a reliable exporter. Further, it is expected to disrupt even the regular export channels. This is because 
the ban in exports of food commodities affects the countries those rely on imports see this leads to a dramatic rise in demand of that commodity this again leads to price rise so these are the non agricultural reasons or factors that causes food price rise now let's see the suggestions given by the author first is to rapidly increase production this is required to make countries to solve their domestic needs and to meet export requirements for this a breakthrough such as green revolution technology is needed we know that the spread of green revolution technology resulted in surplus production and note that it enabled india to achieve self sufficiency in food grains so a similar technology is needed to increase the production thereby not only increasing supply but also as a check on price rise and this becomes possible by the second suggestion what is that it is increased spending on agriculture research and development see this will strengthen and rejuvenate the global agri research system thereby it will result in novel technologies benefiting both producers and consumers now if we come to handling the transmission of global prices to the domestic market it can be moderated through trade policy and other instruments so what kind of trade policy is needed see what india does when international prices go too low is india checks on cheap imports to protect the interest of the producers conversely when the international prices go up it liberalizes imports and imposes checks on the exports this helps in ensuring adequate availability of that food commodity and also reasonable food prices for domestic consumers okay then it should also be remembered that any policy should not disturb normal export because this affects the supply easily rather regulation on those exports which exceeds the normal level can be done okay now regarding the biofuels what is needed is a check on the diversion of land and our food crops and food output for biofuel See, additionally like india the global community must plan to have a global buffer stock of food the buffer stocks firstly helps to distribute food grains in the deficit areas and among the poorer strata of the society the two at a price lower than the market price secondly it helps in resolving the problem of food shortage during adverse weather conditions or during the periods of calamity etc thirdly the buffer stocks are the best way to ensure reasonable stability in food prices and supply this is mainly because since you will have stock domestically international price rise or shocks are diminished plus even in case of export or import ban you will have the supply so the conclusion is all these necessary measures need to be taken to overcome the factors that leads to spike in food prices mainly because of covid and russia ukraine war which are becoming a never ending problem and these are causing the supply disruptions thereby these are leading to food price hikes so the author here concludes by saying that these measures should be taken to overcome any worst case scenario okay see that's all about this news article each and every point that we have discussed is very very useful for your upcoming mains examination See I have covered in this discussion about the food price hikes in a holistic way. I say that you can utilize these points directly because whenever you write your main answer try to have a holistic approach that is even the nook and corner of that topic has to be addressed. Don't take it in a monotonous way. Address all the issues that are concerned with that question or topic, okay? So that is how this discussion is made. utilize each and every point in this discussion in some way or the other to enrich your main answer and don't worry it is also very much useful for your prelims because whenever possible i had given the definition or elaboration of small small topics that has been covered in this discussion itself so these will be more than enough to handle your preliminary type of questions So with this one discussion itself you will be able to cover both your prelims as well as mains preparation okay
so kindly listen to the topic one more time if you need and there will be a mains question followed by this try answering that question okay so with these key points in mind now let's move on to the next news article discussion now have a look at this news article this news article talks about white topping See the third phase of the Brihad Bengaluru Mahanagara Palix ambitious white topping project was approved by the chief minister last week. The project was taken up by a civic body for white topping 92 kilometers of roads of which work is now completed on around 85 kilometers. So the civic body has now announced that it had finished almost 90% of work in the first phase itself. This is the crux of the news article given here. In this context let us quickly go through some of the important points about white topping and then we'll see about its advantages also before all these we'll see what is the necessity for white topping okay see as you know asphalt concrete is one of the most commonly used materials for road construction it consists of about 70% asphalt and 30% aggregate particles But as a result of rapid urbanization close to 35% of Indians now live in urban areas and commute on city roads more than ever before when coupled with the fact that India has the fourth largest auto market in the world our roads are only going to get more congested with vehicles in years to come see this places tremendous pressure on our roads resulting in cracks and dangerous potholes In fact in the last 4 years over 11000 people have died due to pothole related accidents. While these problems have persisted there hasn't been a long term solution that brings relief to roads and commuters alike. In the scenario white topping acts as a rehabilitation alternative. So now what is this white topping? White topping is a Portland cement concrete overlay that is constructed on top of an existing bituminous road. Why are we doing it? See, the principal purpose of an overlay is either to restore or to increase the load carrying capacity or both. Here we are talking about the restoration or increasing the load carrying capacity of the existing pavement, okay? In achieving this objective overlays also restore the rideability of the existing pavements which have suffered rutting and deformations in addition to rectifying other defects such as loss of texture so in simple terms this overlay acts as a long term alternative for the rehabilitation or structural strengthening of the roads see white topping is divided into types depending on the thickness of the concrete layer and whether the layer is bonded to the asphalt substrate or not see white topping is suitable for asphalt pavement with little deterioration although repairs can be made to the asphalt if necessary see if the pavement is badly damaged it should be completely removed and a new concrete pavement should be installed okay Now having seen or known about the white topping let me tell you some of the advantages of white topping Firstly it prevents rutting structural cracks and potholes which provides a safer and faster commute Secondly it improves the structural capacity of existing bitumen pavements and thirdly the initial budget is slightly more than bitumen roads but the life cycle cost is far lower than both bitumen and concrete roads Okay then it reduces pavement deflection resulting in less vehicular fuel consumption that is 10 to 15 percentage less fuel will be consumed and thus reduces emissions then it improves the visibility and commuter safety at night by enhancing light reflectance see this reduces the illumination load of any road the saving energy where it is saving energy of 20 to 30 percentage Then it lowers the vehicular braking distance making it safer in both dry and wet surface conditions and it also reduces the urban heat island effect by observing less heat in turn lowering the energy consumption for air conditioning in urban buildings then note that the white topped pavements is 100% recyclable and can be crushed and reused at the end of life see all these are the advantages of this white topping okay So that's all about this news article with these key points in mind now let's move on to the next news article discussion now have a look at this data point article it is about the employment data that is provided by the center for monitoring indian economy 
See the data says that the employment data for May showed signs of stability and recovery in the labor sector. It also says that the employment rose to 404 million during the month. And this is about the data point given here. In this context, let us see the important points mentioned in the data point about the employment and we will also see generally the status of employment in India. See, I have chosen this as a topic of discussion today because employment is a favorite topic in both your General Studies Paper 1 and General Studies Paper 3 in the mains examination. Also, you can utilize these points whenever you have a preliminary type of question which is involving multiple statements. See, whenever this kind of employment data or report is from an authenticated source, that is from the government source, you can expect a preliminary type of question also from that. Okay? So, this discussion is going to be very, very useful for your mains and then it will also be useful for your prelims. Okay? Before getting into the discussion, look at the syllabus which is relevant to this news article. Just go through it. Now, let's start our discussion. See, Indian economy is on the path of achieving the Prime Minister's vision of a US dollar of 5 trillion dollar economy. And note that this has to be achieved by 2024 to 2025. The economic growth positively affects the job creation. Last year, that is in budget 2021 to 2022, it had been provided a sharp increase in provision for public investment to boost economic activity. And now, take the budget 2022 to 2023. It has further provided a strong impetus for growth. That is with capital expenditure being stepped up sharply by 35.40%. That is from 5.54 lakh crore to 7.50 lakh crore in the current financial year. This outlay, which is approximately 2.9% of GDP, shall not only boost economic activity, but also concurrently improve the employment situation in the country. See, here these points are very, very crucial. Though it might look like a data-oriented thing, you can utilize these points to enrich your main answers. Remember, the public investment in terms of percentage of GDP, which is 2.9 percentage, okay? Now, coming back, see the sustained push by the government to infuse funds to the country's economy has begun to bear results. Certain economic indicators, such as job enrollments in the organized sector, rise in number of new companies registered, growth of startups, and rapid rise in number of unicorns in the country, rise of employment opportunities in new sectors such as AI, that is artificial intelligence, then cloud computing, data analytics, automation under IT or ITS, etc., etc., clearly points out towards an increase in the creation of jobs in the country. Okay. Now, let us see the sector based trends in the employment. See, the sector-based employment data is according to the recent survey reports of the Quarterly Employment Survey and All India Quarterly Establishment-Based Employment Survey. Okay. The nine selected sectors include manufacturing, construction, trade, transport, education, health, accommodation and restaurant, IT or BPO and financial services. With this basic information, let us see the key highlights of the report. Firstly, of the total employment estimated in the selected sectors, manufacturing accounted for nearly 39%, followed by education with 22%, and health as well as ITBPO's sectors, both around 10%. Trade and transport sectors engaged 5.3% and 4.6% of the total estimated workers, respectively. See, the overall percentage of female workers stood at 32.1 percentage which is higher than 29.3 percentage reported during the first round of the QES that is quarterly employment survey and note that the regular workers constitute 87 percentage of the estimated workforce in the selected sectors with only two percentage being casual workers However, in the construction sector, 20% of the workers were contractual and 6.4% were casual workers. 
Now coming to the important points mentioned in the data point. See according to the CMIE data, it is said that agricultural sector has been shedding jobs and the industries were the biggest gainer. And within industry, employment is on the rising trend in both construction and manufacturing. And it is said that the metal industry, which is one of the biggest employer in the manufacturing sector, also witnessed rapid recovery. With this information, let us see some charts supporting the data given. Now look at this chart. This chart here shows the number of persons employed in the past 4 years month wise. In the month of May, almost 404 million persons were employed which was close to the pre-pandemic levels. And it is significantly higher than the lows recorded in 2020 and 2021. Now take this chart. It shows you the number of persons employed in the manufacturing and construction sector. As you can see in the graph, in May, 34.2 million were employed by the manufacturing sector, which is the highest since pandemic. And the construction sector employed 72 million, which is higher than the pre-pandemic levels. Now look at this bar graph. This graph shows the number of persons employed in agriculture, industry and services sector in the months of March, April and May. From this you can clearly say that there has been a shift in the employment. If you see closely you will find out that the shift is from agriculture to industry. What I am coming to say here is that agriculture shed nearly 14.8 million jobs while industry added 15.6 million jobs. See from all these graph you can understand that the employment status in India is getting improvised when compared to the pre-pandemic levels. With these points now let us see the steps taken by the government to increase the growth of the economy and in turn increase the employment rate. See, I am taking the discussion in this flow because first we saw the data which are representing the current employment status in India. Now we will see how it has been pushed to that level that is it has been pushed to a higher level when compared to the pre-pandemic levels. Am I right? So now let's see those measures taken by the government which has pushed the economic growth of the country which is thereby pushing the employment rate. See, to enhance India's manufacturing capabilities and generation of employment, an outlay of Rs 1.97 lakh crore has been announced for production linked incentive schemes. This is for 14 key sectors of manufacturing starting from the fiscal year 2021 to 2022. In the union budget 2022 to 2023, the finance minister said that the production linked incentive in 14 sectors for achieving the vision of Atman Nirbar Bharat has the potential to create 60 lakh jobs. And note that additional production of rupees 30 lakh crore during next five years will be enhanced. See, I have given here the 14 sectors for you. Just go through it. That will be enough. Apart from this, the Prime Minister has approved the proposal to offer financial incentive of 25% of capital expenditure for the manufacturing of goods. That is the goods that constitute the supply chain of an electronic product under the scheme for promotion of manufacturing of electronic components and semiconductors, that is specs. See, additionally, the government of India is encouraging various projects involving substantial investment and public expenditure on schemes like Atmanirbhar Bharat, Rochkar Yojana, then Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana, then you can take the Prime Minister's Employment Generation Program, then the Prime Minister's Street Vendors Atmanirbhar Nidhi, etc., etc. All these no, are enabling the economic growth which is thereby directly creating more jobs and leading to the increase in employment rate. So that's all about this news article. See each and every points mentioned here or in some way or the other will be useful to enrich your mains answer. So note down the points and make use of these points whenever necessary in your main answers. And don't be afraid of the datas. If you are not able to remember the data, just remember the theme. That's more than enough. The theme here is that the employment status of the nation is getting increased. And note that it is getting transformed from the agricultural sector to the manufacturing sector. 
and we saw what are all the measures that were taken by the government that induced this change over from the agricultural sector to the manufacturing sector and then we also saw what are all the measures that are helping in more and more job creation see this kind of government measures all you can directly put in your main answer since this is an authenticated example or authenticated point that has come from the government source it will be very very useful to keep your answers unique okay so with these key points in mind now let's move on to the next part of the news article discussion which is the preliminary practice question discussion now take this first question it is a two statement question so we are going to go through both the statements before answering the question and note that the question is demanding for incorrect statements okay look at the statement 1 article 21 of the constitution could not be denied to convicts under trial detainees and other prisoners in custody except according to the procedure established by law see this statement is correct now look at statement 2 the detention of under trial prisoners in jail custody to an indefinite period violates article 21 of the constitution this statement is also correct see in a landmark judgment involving the state of uttarakhand versus ajam supreme court has stated that the precious right guaranteed by article 21 of the constitution of india cannot be denied to convicts under trial detainees and other prisoners in custody and the exception is provided only according to the procedure established by law by placing such reasonable restrictions as are permitted by law okay that is why i said statement 1 is correct statement 2 is correct because the detention of under trial prisoners in jail custody to an indefinite period violates article 21 of the constitution the word indefinite makes the statement correct this is just given in article 21 itself okay so here both statements are correct and the question is demanding for incorrect statement so your answer here will be option d neither one nor two okay now let's move on to the second question see this question is asked in current year upsc preliminary examination that is it is asked in 2022 prelims and today we made a discussion about this aishman bharat digital mission note that already we had discussed this aishman bharat digital mission before the prelims also and today i had taken it in a little more elaborate way so that you can use those points to quote it as an example in your main answer also okay now look at this question it is having three statements so whenever you get multiple statements you should try applying elimination technique now look at statement 1 see statement 1 is not correct why C participation in the ABDM that is Aishman Bharat Digital Mission is voluntary this is including for citizens okay participation of a healthcare facility or an institution is also voluntary and shall be taken by the respective management that is government or private management however once a management decides to register the respective healthcare facility or institution in the mission it is essential for all the healthcare professionals serving the said facility or institution to register in healthcare professional registry are you understanding that say for example you take a hospital it is registered under the mission then all those professionals working under that hospital should also be enrolled under the mission in the healthcare professionals registry okay so that the institution can become fully integrated with the national digital health ecosystem so the statement one which is saying that the private and public hospitals must adopt it is incorrect here it is always voluntary so statement one is incorrect you can easily eliminate options a c and d and arrive at the answer option b 3 only though you arrive at the answer check with the other two statements okay statement 2 is not correct why see the aishman bharat digital mission will connect the digital health solutions of hospitals across the country with each other based on the foundations laid down in the form of jandan aadhar and mobile which is a trinity and other digital initiatives of the government aishman bharat digital mission is creating a seamless online platform through the provision of a wide range of data information and infrastructure services but note that all these are voluntary 
right so under the mission citizens will be able to create their ayushman bharat health account numbers to which their digital health records can be linked this will enable creation of longitudinal health records for individuals across various healthcare providers and improve clinical decision making by healthcare providers the mission will improve equitable access to quality healthcare by encouraging use of technology such as telemedicine and enabling national portability of health services but note this all the things are voluntary so statement 2 is incorrect because it is having a word called universal health coverage that is involving every citizen of india should be part of it ultimately that should be is not mentioned in the mission so statement 2 is incorrect and as i already discussed regarding the mission it has seamless portability across the country because it is having various technologies for example even telemedicine can be applied so statement 3 is alone correct in this question So your answer here will be option B. Three only is the correct statement. Now look at this question. See today this is a quiz question for you. It is a three statement question. But note that we had covered all the three statements in our today's discussion itself. If you had keenly observed the discussion, you will definitely be able to answer this question. If you are not able to answer this question, go through the discussion once more and then come back and try answering this question. Okay. I hope you will go through the question and post your answers in the comment section and the right answer for this question will be posted in the next 24 hours okay and displayed here are the mains practice question see for your mains you need the skill of writing very much so try practicing at least one question a day see aspirants who are not writing the mains examination this year also can handle this kind of questions it is very much easy and it is depending upon our discussion only so utilize this opportunity and try developing your answer writing skill okay go through both the questions and post your answers in the comment section with this we have come to the end of our discussion if you like this video do like share and comment and don't forget to subscribe to the shankar ias academy's youtube channel thank you for listening